panda, 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 panda. I got broads in Atlanta. Just to the in the family. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today is all about dive lights. And first thing on the list, to decide, uh, you decide, um, what's the purpose of your dive light? So, is it a primary? Is it a backup? Or is it for video? Or what I encounter as the three uh, main purposes. And that's also going to tell you whether you want a light that's rechargeable or a light that is replaceable batteries like alkaline batteries. So, okay, so first let's talk about video lights because I know the least about video lights. So usually video lights, they have um, a reflector that is kind of dappled and it scatters the light uh, as completely and uniformly as possible. So uh, the bottom should where you're shining a light should just be like this, this beautiful blanket of light that's the same all, all around, wide and the same, okay? I've never had a video light, uh, you know, usually they'll be mounted on someone's camera, so uh, I don't have experience with those, but that, that is one choice that you could go. Um, primary lights. Primary light, when I, when I first got serious about diving, I thought primary light was like, oh, for night diving. But actually, um, once, once I started my more serious training, I, I understood that a primary light for me was for diving all the time in any conditions. So my, my primary light is always uh, on my hand. So primary light, you're gonna use it a lot, probably for me on every dive. So having replaceable batteries would not be economical, nor would it be environmental. So you wouldn't be throwing away batteries every few dives or something. So it's gonna be rechargeable. Uh, these days, that's lithium ion. Um, I'll show you my my primary light. My new primary light is is here. Um, features uh, of a primary light that I think are desirable has a handle. Has a handle. Now, um, you'll see a lot of primary lights. For example, they'll have like a handle, like a pitcher or a scoop or something like that. That's going to require my hand to be on that light all the time. Basically, I mean, I, if it's clipped to me, I could on a rope or something, I can let it hang, but whenever I'm using it, it's taking that hand. Whereas this, I've still got my hands to use. I'll check my SPG, I wanna make a hand signal, I wanna uh, do something with a, with a clip or something. These hands are free. So what I would recommend for your primary light, I would recommend a Goodman, a Goodman handle. They call it a Goodman, I have no idea who Mr. Goodman is. Uh, a Goodman handle of some kind. And then on the back, some sort of bolt snap I would tie on. And so uh, before I dive or after I dive, I'm gonna clip it on my, uh, clip it on a ring. So I've got myself really free for when I'm uh, getting in or getting out, climbing a ladder or whatever. My original style, this is my original, 15 years I used this primary light. This is a rechargeable. Uh, this one is made by Light Monkey. Uh, and it has, uh, it's Delrin, it's plastic. And it's LED, of course, the other one's LED. All of these are LED. And uh, it has a Goodman. And this Goodman has a nice uh, feature, actually. Um, it has uh, some bungee that goes around your hand to make it like extra secure. That's, that's a nice feature. And this also has the, the snap in the back. Um, now this light is twist to actuate. So I'm gonna twist it and it goes on. And then untwist it, it goes off. This is the safest design in terms of uh, leakage because it only has uh, the threads, is the only possible place that it can leak. Which brings me to maintenance. So these lights, when you're done diving, you're gonna put it in a water bath, uh, probably with the camera stuff. That's the cleanest water bath. You leave it in there for 20, 30 minutes, an hour. After you dive, let it really uh, soak off, rinse it off, dry it off well. Uh, this is the battery on this one. It has a little charge port there. And this, is the light head, and I don't know if you can see, so it's got a couple of rings. Now, maintenance on this, you're gonna to wanna to keep these threads clean, okay? Uh, grit and sand will tend to, to wanna to get in there, and because these rings have silicone, that attracts and keeps the grit. So every, every once in a while, you're gonna to wanna to take these O-rings out, you're gonna get in here with a toothpick, get all of the old grit and all the old silicone off of there, then put the uh, O-rings back with some silicone grease, just like a shiny layer, and you're good to go. So this one, uh, like I said, 15 years. This one has never leaked. Ah, 15 years, it's never leaked here. <laughs> it has leaked uh, here. This reflector 
this has been serviced. So the reflector has uh, has leaked before. And that, that's kind of a common thing. So this glass will leak. And then what will happen is um, that reflector will not be shiny anymore. It'll start to corrode, uh, start to oxidize. And then you send it back to the manufacturer. Usually you know, they're able to take care of that sort of thing. Okay, so twist, twist on is a very common design in primary and in backup. But uh, becoming more common these days are, I think, what are called reed, reed switches. And they're magnetic switches that do not make a hole in the housing. I'm going to show you another one that, that makes another hole. So that's another failure possibility. Uh, this one has, has a switch. So you push it, I think, two seconds, three seconds, and it's on. And then this one, down power, down power, and then back, cycles back to full. And then push hold, it's off. Uh, so a lot of reed switches have that uh, ability where you know, you're run, running low on your battery, you can power it down to a lower setting. I think this one will maybe last three or four hours on a single charge. This one as well. I don't know how long they take to charge. I just charge them overnight. They generally last for me a day of diving plus a night dive. Sometimes I'll charge up before the night dive if I have a long time and a plug. And I'll, I'll do that. Uh, this this light is one of the other beautiful features of this light is uh, how this Goodman handle folds up. It's smaller to begin with. It's shorter, and uh, it folds up like that. So this this is really nice and compact. Uh, this one is Delrin. I, I don't know if I mentioned. So that's space age plasticky but stronger than plastic, doesn't crack. And this one is, is aluminum, CNC aluminum. And both of them are in the four to $500 range, uh, come with a charger. If anybody's interested in, in uh, looking into one of these, give me a message. Um, so I know the fellow who, who has these made in a factory and I am super impressed with this LED light. Um, it's a nice, strong, uh, narrow beam, really nice uh, uh, penetrating, far penetrating for, for signaling. Uh, very nice at night. It, it's it's a great it's a great light. Highly recommend it. Okay, those primary lights. Uh, now backup light. So my normal backup light actually was extremely like this one. I left it home actually, um, unfortunately. But it's about this size. It's a little bit smaller and has has a snap at the end and it's twist on. And the backup light, as I said before, um, I clip it to my ring here. I put it on the strap under my arm, and there's a little um, elastic down down there at my side, and bam, it's underneath my arm for the whole dive, a whole day. I never even notice it. Never even notice it, and it's there all the time in case I need it. Or to loan it out to someone else. Very often, that, that was uh, the most common purpose of my, my backup lights, actually loaning to people uh, for night dives very often. Okay, but nowadays, a uh, reed switch is very uh, popular for these uh, LEDs. So, one pop and it's on, right? Pop and it's off. Look at the size, man. That, that's fantastic. Of course, it's uh, alkaline batteries. I have no idea how long it would last. Uh, probably, you would not be using it that often. You don't want to use this on your night dive as your primary, obviously, because you're going to want a, a primary and a backup. This is more than serve as a backup. And nice and small, you you can... Oh, you know, you could signal with that as well. Okay, so we talked about why a primary light, the rechargeable battery, is the way to go. Economy and uh, environment. And what I didn't say yet was, with a backup, why an alkaline is the way to go. And the reason for that is uh, its reliability of storage. So an alkaline battery in any of its uh, uses can stay for a long time in storage and bam, you turn that light and it's gonna go on. Like, you can be pretty much sure of it. And a backup light, especially if it's on a night dive, you want that to work. Of course, you're going to test it beforehand, but uh, we want that, any backup uh, tool or device, we want to know it's going to work. Um, so alkaline is the way to go. As you might know, with rechargeables, they're not always as reliable in long-term storage, and they need to be maintained. You know, I've got a, a Bluetooth speaker here that I very rarely charge, and very often when I take it out, it's not doing so good because I forgot to recharge it. So your backup lights, one, you're not going to use it that often, hopefully, and two, it's going to have the, the most uh, reliable battery in it for short-term use possible, which usually is alkaline. Well, this one, I don't recommend. <laughs> So when I, when I first started DDT, I had a bunch of these excess uh, dealer and I had, you know, a fleet of these uh, really nice light output. 
and good capacity. So it's got four C batteries in here. It's LED, so it burns for a long time and has a very nice beam. It's probably 10 to 15 degrees, so it's a good combination between spread and uh, for signaling light. You know, they, they have a handle like this, which is, you know, it's not great for a primary. As I said, it ties your hand up, you know, has a spot I can put one of these. Um, two real downsides. Uh, one is this switch, right? So this switch type, it's, right? it won't move anymore because it's frozen. This one flooded. And so I've got a hole in the canister for the batteries and then I've got a hole for the switch. So I've got two possible failure points. And man, these lights never lasted me more than, I don't know, two years. You know, very often they would flood in the first year. And, and you know, I think retail was 70 or 80. And, you know, that's, that's not good to last a year or two. Um, so this one flooded and actually cracked. Which gets to the next point. This, this plastic, Delrin will wear. It will scratch. It will wear. It's not going to crack. Uh, whatever this is, I don't know. Might be some ABS plastic or something. Uh, this will crack. This will definitely crack. So I hope that's showing up on the green screen. I just noticed that might green out. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so not, not recommended. Um, last, light use. So, uh, as I said, when I was uh, first getting serious about diving, um, you know, I saw guys using uh, their dive lights during the day, and I was like, what? What's that? And because uh, I considered it a, a night a night tool. And uh, what I learned as I got more serious into training, especially tech training, is that the light is primarily a communication tool. So um, during the day, actually just last week, Hachi Jojima had a big group. I was the primary dive leader. And so I had, you know, I don't know, I think it were nine divers. I think it was 10, including me. So I had, you know, sometimes two, 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 three, you know, way back there. And, and uh, so signaling to folks, asking, you know, they're not going to see this if they're, you know, the last pair or trio back there, but they're going to see this. Are you okay? So a circle, are you okay? And then leave the light there. If they're okay, and if they have a light, they'll circle the light back to me. I could see that. We had, I don't know, 30, 40 meters of viz, so I, I could, you know, see them 30, 40 meters away. They could give me, or if they were having trouble, I could see that really well. So uh, during the day, communication. I can wiggle a light side of someone's mask or in front of the space in front of them. If I want to get their attention, just wiggle it there. Maybe I want to show them something, a fish or a turtle. Usually it was turtles this past weekend. So boom, boom, boom. Hey, look it. Um, so getting people's attention, signaling. As a night dive tool, it's also largely communication. Also illumination, obviously. But um, my, my buddy protocol, so let's imagine my, my buddy is over there. So. I'm gonna be scanning. It's 11 o'clock. Thank you. I'm gonna be scanning in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be looking at stuff. Hey, there's a fish, there's a lobster, there's a, an octopus. Cool. Into my buddy's zone or where I think his zone is in front of him. And then back, checking my zone, looking for stuff. Back to my buddies. Checking my zone, didn't it? Back to my buddy. And my buddy should be doing the same. So every few seconds, three, four, five seconds, I should have some positive feedback that my buddy is there and doing okay. If I don't get that uh, movement, that feedback uh, from, from my buddy's light, uh, you know, 20, 10, 20 seconds, I don't know, 30 seconds, I'm gonna, hmm, let me check out my buddy. So I'm gonna go into where I think my buddy's field of view is and I'll make a circle, okay, and leave my light shining there. If he's okay and he sees it, he's gonna circle around my light and then bam, we continue. If he doesn't circle, that means, uh oh, he, he's lost me or he's taken a picture. Or now, now I'm gonna physically look for his body or his light, which I haven't had to do if we have our light communication going on all the time. And now I'm gonna look for him. And by the way, uh, so probably a lot of you watching this video don't, don't have uh, issues with this maybe. I don't know, in the States, I didn't see so many other night divers, you know, dive, you know, we, we dive all over not so many people, but here when you night dive, there's, there's some traffic sometimes. And I tell you what, when two groups of divers, you know, converge, that's always when buddy switches happen because everybody looks the same at night. So if, if you, if you encounter another set of divers, uh, on, on a night dive, you know, make sure that your buddy is the one that you came home with or, or you, you wandered away with, because in my experience, that's, 
more often than not, how people lose lose their buddies at night. Okay, okay. So we went over uh, primary backup video, uh, alkaline versus rechargeable. We talked a little bit about how to use the dive light uh, in the daytime and at night. So I hope you got some value out of that. If you did, you know, pound the like. Um, yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I've got a goal to get this uh, this channel to a thousand subscribers and beyond. We're, we're back on the mission, uh, DDT, with the videos. And thank you, and see you on the beach.